This one here, the veil is intact. So these are number ones. This one's number two because part of the veil is gone. Number three because more than 50% of the veil is gone. Number four and number five, there's no veil. This one's just turning into a five because the cap is starting to lift, whereas this one's still downturned. One, two, three, four, five. show you what the ground looks like in these forests. So you've got trees that are 80 plus years old. It's a mix of, this is hemlock, and there's lots of pine, the longer needles on the pine, and these short needles on the hemlock. You can see the bark on the hemlock here, the pine here. And in this ground, you get this thick layer of organic material that we call duff. The pine mushrooms can grow in this and sometimes you don't see them they're underground you have to pop them out so in this forest the moss is just covering almost everything once you get into the bush and the mushrooms like to grow in it welcome to the NAS. A section of British Columbia's wilderness following the NAS River. North of the Great Bear Rainforest and south of the Cassiar Mountains, where the ancient forest provides a yearly harvest of pine mushrooms. Randy has been coming here for more than 35 years, and myself for over a decade. For us, this place is like a forest garden. We've watched this patch grow each season as we spread the mushroom spore to new areas and respect what this beautiful environment has to offer.
So there's a moss bed here. And at first, you might not see any. When you look closer, that's a pine mushroom button right there. It's a small one. But there could be more in this bed and we just can't see them. So I'm just going to pop this out. It's a little button. And this is small enough that there's no veil yet. When you're done, make sure you fill in your hole. And uh, show it some respect. This is a number one. We grade pine mushrooms into five grades sometimes. And it's all based around the stage of the maturity of the mushroom. Pop that out. So this is a number, probably number three. So it's got less than 50% of this veil intact. This is the veil. Okay. Still nice. The more intact the veil is, the more valuable the mushroom is. This is a flag, the number five. This one's no good, it's, it's too old. But these, sometimes they'll poke up out of the bed and we call them flags because You'll see that from a mile away or, you know, 100 meters away. And they'll indicate that there could be more hiding in the moss in that spot. I'll pop these out. Yeah, no veil. It's also in good shape. There's two buttons here. Ooh, there we go. Like That's a beauty, eh? Out of the moss. They can grow in the exact spot every year or sometimes within an inch of where they grew the year before. So you really get to know your beds where every mushroom is on a good year. Oh, he's hounding the buttons. Look at that. Oh. Another little baby under there. Well, that's going to be a two Number or three. Two. Yeah, two or By three. the time the day's done, yep. it's really thin veiled. The veil is starting to open. It's still intact now, but by the time we get it to the buying station, the mushroom buyer, it'll probably have turned into a number two or three. So sometimes you come across a bed that you know you've picked in before and you don't see any pines, but there's actually a dozen buttons hiding underneath the moss and you've got to feel for them. So that's a fully open veil. And we'll probably eat some of these for dinner, so we'll take the flags today. There's a pine ladder. So this is where, this is where uh, Pino and I were sleeping under the tree here with our tarp and the bear came and we camped right there, parked the truck right there, come up here, tarp, sleeping bags. We put a rope across, tarp over it and went to sleep because we were driving for the last 20 some hours. He's laying there, I'm laying here, but I had the shotgun leaning against the tree here and then in the middle of the night. I feel something walk over, I thought it was Pino. And I open my eye and I look and it's a bear walking over me, over my sleeping bag. And it walks over and grabs Pino's pack sack that he had toothpaste in. So that's what the bear came for, was that toothpaste. Then he took off that way, got about there with his bag. So I grabbed the gun, sat up, boom, I just shot into the tree there. And the bear left the bag and f***ed off. So you scared the hell out of Pino, hey? Oh yeah, he was asleep when the gun went bang. <laughs> the next day, my buddy, because these trees weren't here then, these is all growing in. You could see the road all the way up. And he sees the tarp here. And Some, he looks, somebody else you're talking. Yeah, a friend of mine. So he sees the tarp and he says, oh, that must be Randy. He comes up here and he lets his dog go and the dog comes and the bear's here again. And the dog chases the bear up the tree. So the bear's going up the tree. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And every time he's going, ooh, he's blueberries. 
There's a little white dog that turned purple. I swear to God. He washed him like three or four times. And then he went back and everybody's laughing about his purple dog. And he's telling the story. He dyed your dog purple. Yeah. <laughs> so look at these flags. Right? These are huge. There's a beauty. Yeah, they're nice. They're, I mean, they're, they're number fives. but And then next to them, hiding in the moss, he's exposed these beauty buttons. Three of them there. Mitchell. Let's see if we can. Oh, oh, oh. No, it's a rock. Okay. There's another. Split top because it's got a root. Yeah, look at that. It grew around the root and split it right now. Oh, there's a little button. Yeah. Oh, there's another one. That's a good sign. Yeah. Uh, look at that. So we've got this one here, the veil's intact, right? So these are number ones. This one's number two because part of the veil's gone. Number three because more than 50% of the veil is gone. Number four and number five, there's no veil. And this one's just turning into a five because the cap is starting to lift, whereas this one's still downturned. So one, two, three, four, five. So these ones, these ones often trick you from a distance. It looks like a flag, but this is actually a different type of mushroom. This is a rusla. They're harmless, but we don't usually eat these. However, uh, they get taken over by another fungus sometimes, and that's what a lobster mushroom is. It's a rusla that's been taken over by a different fungus. And we do eat lobster mushrooms and pick lobster mushrooms. Um, a lot of the time we get a whole basket of buttons there, but this is what we got this time. So we're going to sit down by the fire, have some coffee, and then we're going into the main 